In this video, I'll show you how to create 8-bit music using the Family Tracker. My name is Matthew Ivick, and I've used Family Tracker for games appearing on the Nintendo Switch, Steam, and mobile devices. Not only is this video a step-by-step -step guide to Family Tracker, but I'll also be teaching you powerful concepts behind sound design and music composition. Also, all files used in this video are included in the link below. Let's get started. To make sounds in Family Tracker, we need two things, an instrument and a channel. Channels don't require any setup, so let's start with instruments. To create an instrument, from the drop-down menu, click New Instrument. Alternatively, you can click the Add Instrument button immediately to the right of the song menu. A new 2A03 instrument labeled 00, New Instrument, should appear. 2A03 refers to the sound processor that came standard with all Nintendo Entertainment Systems. In Family Tracker, it refers to the chipset we're emulating. This particular chipset emulates five channels. Pulse 1, Pulse 2, Triangle, Noise, and DPCM. DPCM. A channel contains data about the sounds we're programming. Channels are organized like spreadsheets. They have horizontal rows and vertical mm. columns. By default, each channel has four columns. The leftmost column contains the note to be played, followed by the instrument column, the volume column, and finally the effect column. Here are each channel sounds by highlighting the channel's note column. Then use your keyboard or MIDI device to play notes. Here's a table of how notes are mapped onto your keyboard. The triangle channel sounds an octave lower than all the other channels. You may notice that the DPCM channel doesn't produce any sound. This is because this channel is used purely for samples. We can change the timbre or sound quality the channel produces through our instrument. Double click the instrument, check the duty slash noise box, and enter a value 0 through 3 in the field below. Values 0 through 1 work with the noise channel. The triangle channel is unaffected by any of these changes. Now that you know how each channel sounds, you may be getting some ideas for music already. Let's figure out how to record sounds using our instrument. In order to permanently save notes to a column, we need to use record mode. Record mode is used to enter music data into each channel. Enter record mode by pressing the space bar. The row to be recorded will turn red. With some record mode active, press keyboard keys or MIDI notes to input them into the selected channel's note column. Additionally, we can assign volume levels in the adjacent volume column using symbols 0 through F. Fami Tracker uses hexadecimal. I've included a table which converts numbers 0 through 15 into hex. If you want to input more notes than is available within the current frame, right click within the frame window and select insert frame or press insert. If you notice, we have five columns. Each has a green number labeled 00 in it. These numbers correspond to the channels we have. The numbers themselves just represent patterns or programmed musical data. If we want to repeat a pattern, instead of entering all the data again or copy and pasting, we can simply switch the pattern to a previous number. After recording notes and other information, we're ready to play back our sounds. Press the green play arrow button or hit F5 on the keyboard. Our music will continue to loop until you press the blue square, which is the stop button, or press F8. If we want the music to stop on its own, program a C effect in any instrument's effect column. I'm sure you've noticed the instrument never stops playing. That's because we need to apply an envelope to shape the instrument's sound. Envelopes are defined by four parameters, attack, decay, sustain, and release. This is what people refer to when they say ADSR envelope. ADSR is probably the most powerful concept in sound design. Not only is it used to shape instruments, but we can use it to backwards engineer sounds in the real world and create models of them in Family Tracker. This idea is pretty big and extends past the scope of this video, but here's a practical example. To add an envelope to our instrument, double click on the instrument we created. Now let's add an envelope. Check the volume box and hit the plus sign next to the size. You can adjust the value of each step by dragging the bar up or down. The higher the value, the louder the instrument will be at that point in the envelope cycle. Alternatively, a more accurate way of doing this is to simply enter the number you like in the field below. Values 0 through 15 are accepted here. 
If we want our instrument to stop playing, we need to program a zero at the very end of the envelope. When we play back the music we've programmed, you'll notice that the sound stops each time after the determined length of the envelope. But how do we know how long our envelope is in relationship to what we see on screen? If you look up at the song settings, you should see something called speed. This is how many values are in each row. So for example, if our instrument's volume envelope has six values, the envelope will be completed after a single row is played. An envelope with 12 values then will take two rows to be completed. Because at speed six, 12 ticks will have gone by after two rows have been played. You get the picture. So our sound has an attack and a decay, but it really hasn't incorporated a sustain or release. Let's program the sustain and release part of our envelope. Heading back to our envelope, if we program a forward slash, anything after that forward slash is considered the release of our instrument. We can now program the release of our instrument directly into our pattern using the backslash command in the note column. This is especially useful when we want to deliberately control when each instrument releases. So now our instrument has an attack, a decay, sustain, and release. However, not all instruments always sustain at a single volume. In other words, if you think of an instrument like a violin, when the violinist sustains a note, that note doesn't always stay at the exact same volume level. Sometimes it'll get a little bit louder when the bow changes, or maybe the way the violinist is using their hand, it causes the note to become quieter at certain points during the sustain. Either way, we have control of this in Family Tracker 2 using the vertical pipe command. So let's head over to the instrument again and try this out. To create a dynamic sustain, use the vertical bar or pipe function in your envelope. Anything after the bar up until the first value of the release function is considered part of the dynamic sustain. So type in some values and see what you get. Now when we play back our music, you'll notice that our sustain is dynamic. It's moving up and down through a cycle. ADSR envelopes aren't restricted just to the volume box here. For instance, we can click on the duty slash noise box and we can create a envelope for how our instrument's timbre will sound. You can get some pretty cool and wacky things just by playing around with this for a while. While we're here, you can experiment with the arpeggio box as well. If I program 0, 4, 7 and play the note C, the arpeggio C, E, and G will be played. We can use an ADSR filter too for some interesting effects. Here's a basic table which converts numbers into intervals. Pitch and high pitch boxes here adjust the fine tuning of the particular note we're playing. We can use a loop here to create some interesting vibrato effects. Most of the effects we're creating here can be created through the tracker window as well using FamiTracker's pre-built effects. Keep in mind, however, that the effects programmed in the actual instrument will always take priority over effects programmed within the tracker window. Instead of just talking about the effects, I've decided to compose some music to show you what they can do. I tried to stick to the most common effects used in most pieces. Check it out. Aside from writing a lot of music, there are two things you can do to rapidly improve your skills at Family Tracker. The first is to approach pieces with a concept. For instance, for the piece of music that you just heard, I knew that the concept was going to focus primarily around showing off the effects in Family Tracker. This meant the music itself had to be simple and also had to be conducive to using a lot of effects. By coming into the piece with a simple idea, I already knew what I was going to write. The second thing you can do is to simply copy sounds from other games. This is made possible by NSF Importer. Granted, when you import these files, they're imported at speed 1. However, you can still backwards engineer them by looking at the music column data. Once you start creating these instruments, you can then import them back into your own modules and use them for your own music. By doing this, you'll get an idea of what's already been done. It may also provide inspiration for something totally new. 
Lastly, if you enjoyed this tutorial, consider checking out my book, FamiTracker Fundamentals. My book features a detailed and in-depth breakdown of the music creation process from instrument design to sound design and several approaches to music composition as well. I cover music arrangement, rational rhythms, mixing, and more. In addition to this, the book also comes with complete example files of music and instruments. If you're interested in this, a link is in the description below. Until next time, thanks for watching.